Hello, hello. Welcome to Rise Above with Tammy Lynn. I'm Tammy Lynn, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak into your life, to empower and encourage you to continue running your race, fighting that good fight of faith, and finishing strong in Jesus' name. Those of you who are just feeling the weight, the weight, the heaviness of the weight of the return of your, your spouse because they walked away from your marriage covenant, they abandoned it, I want to speak to you because as I uploaded a message earlier because the Holy Spirit had given me this word from uh, this group called Red called Start Again and it was a prophetic word um, regarding restoration and that these ones would be returning and asking can we start again. But as I was uploading that and putting some stuff in the description and I had put in Philmon 15 that he'd given me, something really struck out. And when these words struck my spirit, um, I felt this message stir in me for those of you who the struggle is real and you wanted it and you felt like you needed it yesterday. And yesterday as in... 16 years ago when it first happened. Six years ago when it first happened. Two years ago when it first happened. Two months ago when it first happened. I want to encourage you through this word because he speaks, he is speaking to you by telling you, and he says in verse 15, for perhaps he was for perhaps this reason separated from you for a while that you would have him back forever. The thing that really caught my attention was for a while. I just want to encourage you because I know that again you wanted it and you felt like you needed it yesterday. But he is say, he's telling two things. And the first part, yeah, it doesn't really sound that great because he's saying a while. So there's going to be some time. And with that, I feel him saying, you've got to give him some time. And you've got to trust him in this time. He's also given the end result that's going to happen after this while. This while of the wait, <laughs> this while of the stretch of your faith. He's faithful to also tell you so that when they return, this time it's forever. My brother in Christ, my sister in Christ, you don't want the one that walked away from you back. You want the one that when you stood there on that wedding day making that covenant to that person and before God, in one sense you want that person back, but God wants you to even have a better version of that person because that wedding day you got a glimpse of their soul of what was in their heart. In the marriage, some stuff happened and, and took place. But really, there was some stuff in them before they even said, I do. You don't want that person back. You are missing the one that you said, I do to. You are missing the one that you created all of these wonderful memories with. But there is also that one that was weak. Weak people commit adultery. Weak people don't keep their promises. Weak people abandon covenant relationships. You don't want that weak person back. And you do deserve better. And so you have got to trust that in this while, and I know this while has been a very long while for many of you, you have to trust that God is doing a work in them. So when they come back, history is not going to repeat itself. 
You will never again have to experience infidelity, adultery in your marriage. Okay? You will never again have to experience the lies. Because I sent some, some of you, like you had someone and they just lied. And those lies just really made it very difficult for you to trust them. And because you didn't trust them, you couldn't even be you. You were even acting like someone different in your marriage. I don't just got somebody on that one. It's not your fault. It's not your fault that they walked away. And I know some of you have people in your life that they have tried to convince you and they have tried to convince others that it was your fault, that you this and you that and this, this and that. Even if you're not a perfect person, I mean, anybody with common sense also knows that, hey, you're standing. You're standing for your marriage. You're wanting to work it out. So that says everything about you. So wise people are not going to believe the totality of everything that is coming out of someone's lips that has left a marriage covenant. Any spirit-filled person is going to know that it wasn't your fault. That you didn't push that person away. Okay? You may have showed your imperfection, but your imperfections and your weaknesses does not give anyone an excuse to betray and walk away from a marriage covenant. Okay? I mean, they would have to have a solid biblical reason to file for a divorce. And without that, they don't have God's approval. Okay? So again, I'm just really feeling you need to know that it's not your fault. And you really need to give yourself grace and you need to stop saying, well, if I would have this, if I would have that, if I would have prayed more, if I would have nagged as much, if I would have worked harder, if I would have understood her more, if I wouldn't have gone outside, you know, the marriage 20 years ago, then we wouldn't be doing this. Whatever happened, whatever weaknesses or sin that happened within your marriage was not um, too big for God to repair, for God to forgive. So if you are a believer and you are standing for your marriage with the one that God has joined to you and they are refusing to return, then you need to know God is dealing with them and you need to love yourself enough and respect, well, I don't want to say respect, but trust God enough. Love yourself enough and trust God enough to allow him to do everything in his timing because, again, you don't want that one back that showed you their weakness, that showed you their inability to protect you. A strong person does not walk away from the one that they made a promise to, they made a vow to. So let the Lord deal with their weaknesses. Let the Lord deal with their stupidity, okay? And trust a while. I mean, he's saying a while, okay? Thankfully, some of you, it's been like such a while that, I mean, he's also saying now all the time a fulfillment is here, but I just felt like I needed to encourage somebody with that word because you haven't understood why it didn't happen yesterday. You don't, you don't understand why the Lord would tell you that he's going to restore, but instead of getting better, it looks like it's getting worse. They're still refusing to come home. They filed for a divorce. They got a divorce. They entered into an adulterous relationship with someone that they were in the adulterous relationship with while they were with you. They've entered into some other relationship, which that is an adulterous relationship. If they abandoned your covenant with no biblical reason at all, and God hates divorce, so it's going to have to be something really huge for God to give permission for someone to divorce someone. God does not play. 
God holds people accountable, and the church needs to start holding people accountable too. I mean, y'all don't get me get going on that one because y'all y'all are beginning to know how I feel on it. So, God is not going to to release them, and without that release from God, they're not going to have that blessing from God to enter into any other kind of relationship. And again, if they do, it's an, it's, it's adultery. They sure are. You should pray for them. I I know it doesn't feel good to know of that news, to see that news. But when you see it through God's perspective, then you actually have compassion for them. Because not only are they having to face God for an abandonment of a covenant they made with you, but they are out there like that prodigal son, living in a pig pen with a counterfeit in adultery, sin. So it's like one sin after another sin, okay? They need salvation. Okay, so stay in grace, stay in mercy. And I know that there, there are things that can occur and things that can come across your eyes or come to your ears. And, you know, and a lot of things God has been protecting you from. But the enemy likes to bring things your way because the enemy is like, well, if I could let them know what's going on over there, Oh, they'll stop standing. They'll get mad. They'll get offended. And they'll be done. So you got to watch out for that. You got to guard your heart. And you got to guard the promise. The Lord told you he was going to restore your marriage. And all that other stuff in the in between, in the while, you need to trust God, God with it. And you just need to focus on God. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm also going to say this. Because in this while, and I, I, now I've seen people... And I'm going to say this with the righteous anger. The ones that God has for you to be, to be in your life, that is your tribe, their time is going to be spent praying for you and feeding you to stay strong in your stance of waiting for that promise from the Lord. And if they are doing anything else, if they are speaking words that are discouraging trying to discourage you from standing, if they are speaking negative words because they can't see the possibility in it because they lack the ability to understand that he is the God of all possibilities or because they are finding out information and they feel it is their right to play God and to tell you something and it would be something discouraging to get you discouraged and to get you to give up. The devil is a liar, people of God. And I am here to remind you that God speaks. And if God wants you to know something, he will bring it to you in a way that brings you peace. Because he is a gentle God and he is a faithful God. And I can also tell you, God is not going to sit there and tell you that he's going to restore your marriage. But then blindside you with some news that would only rattle your spirit. That would only put you in a spiritual state of distress. So we go back to Daniel 7. I thought this was going to be a short message. I just wanted to encourage somebody because he was saying a while. Uh, but we go back to Daniel 7, 25 through 27. And he has been very clear for months. And this has been a very uh, strong scripture in my spirit for kingdom standards. That the enemy comes to try to wear the saints out. Well, how is he going to try to wear you out? He's not physically going to come into your home with some boxing gloves Okay, and do a phys have a physical match with you. No, he is going to bring, uh, he's going to blindside you. He is going to try to trip you up. He is going to try to d discourage you by causing you to come across some information that is irrelevant to the word of God. People of God, I say it in every one of my videos. Fight the good fight of faith and finish strong. And the only way you can fight the good fight of faith and finish strong is if you are right here in his word. <laughs> and all the Bibles I have, y'all, I just keep going back to this one that is just old and it is just, it just looks good. I love it. I have a lot of new Bibles. Y'all don't feel sorry for me. I love this. This is my favorite. But right here, people of God, 
this is how you fight it. You don't go to social media trying to find out information to see if God is answering you. You don't go play investigator. And your friends, your tribe, they don't go try to play investigator either. They are so full of the Holy Spirit that they are in God's word and they are truly, their time is spent praying for you and encouraging you and standing in the gap for you. And uh, your true tribe, they're also protectors. We serve a God that is a protector. And again, if God wants you to know something, because he will reveal things that are hidden. But he also hides things from you because he is a faithful father and he is wanting to protect you. He wants you to focus on the outcome of restoration. He wants you to focus on the outcome of that fulfillment of that promise. Okay, and he does that by being so faithful to continually encouraging you through his word. Encouraging you through dreams, speaking to you through billboards and lately just even like the titles, YouTube titles, titles of songs. He is so faithful to keep you encouraged. And I am a vessel here to help keep you encouraged. So I certainly pray that this encourages you. I wish I could tell you it's going to happen today. He's been saying now is the time of fulfillment. Now is the year of Gamal. Now is the time of restoration. He's been using that word now. But stay strong in the Lord. And just, just because it didn't happen again yesterday after you've been hearing now for a while. And just because it may not happen to today. Just know though that in any moment. Because the Hebrew word for today I can't remember what the exact word is, but I do remember the meaning of that Hebrew word, though, means any day now. So any day now. And when he says a while, he didn't say, give me 24 hours. He didn't say, give me two weeks. You know, all these things that sound so good to us because we want it when we want it and we want it now. And if you're like me, you're like a spoiled little brat. I grew up the baby of six. And we weren't rich. I mean, we, we, we I grew up having the things that I needed and not everything I wanted, trust me. And a lot of hand-me-downs. But I appreciate those hand-me-downs. And to this day, I sure do love some thrift shop shopping. And one of these days, I'm going to have a Christian thrift store. And yeah, I'm, I did, I'm not even going to share all my vision. Because I've also learned, be careful who you share stuff with. Because they will either take your vision or they will be used by the enemy to come and sabotage your vision. And so that vision, I felt myself going that way and I'm coming back. So that vision of restoration that you have, you have got to protect it. You have got to protect the promise. And you have got to trust God in the wait. So again, I hope that encourage, encourages you. I felt like just in that one scripture, not only was he telling you, this is going to be a little while. And many of you, it's been that, that, that little while and it's here. But some others, like, I mean, it may, it could be next week. And, and you hear these words out there and, you know, for the month of October and that this month, I can't say that. I believe that it's now, but I am not God and his thoughts are so much higher and his ways are so much higher. I just have peace. When God says it, that settles it. And he has given me a gift and encouragement. And I, I just, I'm just so compelled to empower each of you to stay in the race and continue fighting the good fight of faith. And to remind you continually that he is not a man that shall lie or change his mind. And with him, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. And that he is the God of all flesh. And there is nothing too difficult for him. So I'm here to keep you push, keep to continue pushing you, okay? And you're, you're, you're right there. So keep going and don't be overtaken with despair because of this while. Just understand that this while has a purpose. And it is because God loves you so much. And he refuses to allow history to repeat itself again. So they will come back asking if they can start again, if y'all can start again, come back apologizing and acknowledging that this was their fault. 
that it was it came to this point because it was their fault because they mo- made the choice to give up to walk away and to abandon and upon this return they're not going to look the same you'll look in their eyes and you'll know okay that one on the day that you said i do that was the one but this one is going to be far better because when god restores he restores to more people of god they're just going to be better because anything that was in them that was once shakable is going to be removed so that which remains is unshakable because your marriage is not going to be shaken again and again you're not going to experience infidelity again and whenever they open their mouth you're now going to believe them this time and it's going to bring freedom to you that you're going to be able to enjoy enjoy life enjoy being around them because you're not going to be so anxious of are they lying to me are they not what are they hiding from me and i know that's really speaking to some of you right now because you if you're honest with yourself you were like that a lot because you just couldn't trust them you loved them but you couldn't trust them love from god never fails and it never changes so even in their imperfections and their weaknesses and their sins, the things that they did in your marriage and towards you, you continue to love them. Your love didn't change for them. But they went through some changes and it was unhealthy. And it even had you in bondage so you were not able to be you. So again, he is saying whenever this happens, then when they open their mouth, you're going to trust them. Because he, he, he's relaying that foundation of kingdom marriages, okay? And he, the chief cornerstone, is coming in and taking his rightful place. So trust me. Trust him. As the chief cornerstone is in his right, rightful place, there's no way they can open up their mouth like they did before and lie. Mm-mm. They are going to be very sensitive to his presence and his spirit. So they're going to be truth tellers from here on out. Glory, hallelujah. And history won't repeat itself again in a way, in a sense that they walked away from you. And this walk away that they did wasn't the first time that they walked away. So the Lord is just bringing it all to an end. He, he's like, he's stopping that cycle, that toxic cycle. He's removing the things that are not bearing fruit. He's removing the things that um, have been shakable. So that which remains is unshakable. So again, trust him in that while. There's a purpose for it. And don't worry about anything else that is going on during this time. Just keep your eyes fixated on God. Keep your eyes fixated on his word. Just focus on his scripture and guard your heart against all the voices. Because trust me, hell is very threatened by the fulfillment of this promise. Hell does not want to see the fulfillment of the restoration, the reconciliation of your marriage. So hell's not going to give up that easy. But keep standing, people of God. Stay strong in your faith. And until next time, shalom.